the Canadian Rockies are home to towering peaks, roaring rivers, and all manner of furry friends. Sometimes, however, the furry friends can be, well, a bit less friendly. Thankfully, there is a worst case, a last case, deterrent. I'll be taking a bit of a break from my usual routine of reviewing a specific piece of backcountry gear to instead be talking about a general class of equipment, in this case, this stuff, bear spray. A lot of people I run into both recreationally and professionally have a lot of misconceptions about what bear spray is, how you properly wear it, and how you properly use it. So I hope in this video to clear up some of those misconceptions. First off, what is bear spray? Bear spray is a chemical suspension of capsaicin, which is the compound that makes hot peppers spicy, combined with a chemical propellant that makes the capsaicin come out easily from a container such as this. Animals that come in contact with bear spray have irritation in their eyes, nose, and throat, which should allow you to get away from a negative encounter with such an animal. When purchasing a canister of bear spray, what are you looking for? First off, size. As you might imagine, larger canisters contain more spray inside and have a greater discharge time. That gives you a, a better chance of actually being able to effectively deter a bear. So generally I say bigger can the better. In Canada they generally come in two sizes, either 225 grams or 325 grams, which in my mind at least you can skimp weight on a lot of places in backcountry travel, but for a can of bear spray you might as well add the extra 100 grams to give you more flexibility. Next up, you should look at the concentration of capsaicin in the spray. In this case, this uh, canister of Bear Beware Plus has 0.98% capsaicin and 0.84% of related capsaicinoids, which are similar chemicals that are also spicy and kind of add to the effect. For most bear sprays, the concentration of capsaicin and related capsaicinoids should be between 1 and 2%. So in this case, we have about 1.7% between the two types of compounds, so that's good. You might wonder why 2% is the upper limit for concentration of capsaicin in bear spray. If you go much higher, the capsaicin actually starts to interfere with the propellant. Uh, the next and very important thing to look at is the expiry date. As I was saying, bear spray does contain capsaicin and propellant, and the propellant can decay over time. So each bear spray will have an expiry date. In this case, the canister says on the bottom, expiry December 2024. So this one's good for quite a long time from now. The last thing to look at is the canister should have some sort of safety mechanism. In this case, we have this kind of glow-in-the-dark tab on the top with little serrations on it. And this means I can't trigger the bear spray while this is engaged. If I slip it off, then the bear spray is live. I would depress this trigger here and the spray would come out of the canister. Now, it's good to practice actually taking this off and putting it back on. It can be a little bit finicky sometimes to put it back without triggering the bear spray and you want to be practiced at that just so it's not a novel experience when you're in the field actually having a negative encounter with a bear. Kind of on a related note, most bear sprays nowadays come with some sort of holster. Uh, this one here I actually purchased after market, but take bear spray, you can put it within the holster, seal it up, makes it a little more protected, there'll be some sort of attachment point to make it easier to attach to yourself, and just a good idea to help uh, keep the bear spray close at hand, easier to deploy when you need it. Now that you've purchased your canister of bear spray, it's important to talk about how to wear it effectively. In this case, it'll depend a lot upon what sort of equipment and clothing you're wearing, but there's a few general principles to keep in mind. For me, how I choose to carry my bear spray while traveling depends a lot upon what sort of clothing and what equipment I have at that time. Usually when I'm in the backcountry, I have either shorts or pants that have a belt, in which case I can clip that quite easily to a hard point on the belt. The bear spray will stay with me, whether I have my pack on or not, and that basically solves that problem quite nicely. Now we'll take a look at the pros and cons of a few different methods of carrying bear spray. First up, carrying bear spray in a pocket. This is a bad idea. 
Even in a well-fitted pocket, it is easy for the spray to fall out while you're moving or stop suddenly. Additionally, pockets are often buried under packs or layers, which might cost you critical time during an encounter with a bear. Second, carrying bear spray on a pack strap. This can be a good method, and with a sturdy strap and carabiner, keep the spray close at hand. That being said, you do have to be mindful that if you take the pack off, the spray will go with it. While the pack is on, however, the spray is visible and easy to access. Lastly, carrying bear spray on a belt. This can be a great method that keeps your spray secure to your body, even with lots of moving and shaking around. There are a few steps to properly deploy bear spray that take a bit of practice to master. If that was a bit too fast, let's rewind and slow it down. First, when noticing a bear, turn to face the animal and remove the bear spray from its holster. Hold the spray with two hands, keeping your dominant hand on the top near the trigger. Slide the safety off the trigger with your dominant hand, keeping the bear spray pointed slightly downwards and towards the bear. The spray is now ready to deploy, and with practice, this whole process can take only a second or two. Okay, so now we know what bear spray is, how to wear it, and the sequence of steps to actually deploy it properly. The next, and probably the most important thing to talk about, is actually how to use the spray during an encounter with a bear, and how the spray will behave. To do this, I'll be doing a quick demonstration based on some of the principles talked about in the 2021 academic paper, which if you're interested in this topic, I'd highly recommend giving that paper a read. It is linked below. Through a mixture of high-speed photography and computer simulations, that paper found that bear spray typically leaves a canister at around 70 kilometers an hour, though it quickly slows to about 10 kilometers an hour. Before doing any practice and training with bear spray, it is very important to make sure the surrounding area is clear of people or other creatures, just to make sure you're not negatively affecting anyone by your training. Here we'll do a bit of target practice, demonstrating usage of bear spray at a distance of 10, seven, and four meters away using a canister of recently expired bear spray that I got from a friend. In gusty conditions, only a small portion of the spray reached the pillowcase when it was 10 meters away. At a distance of 7 meters, a significant amount of spray reached the pillowcase, likely enough to deter a bear. At a distance of four meters away, the pillowcase was almost fully coated, even with a strong crosswind gust. Compiling these results, a distance of around seven meters is a good ballpark value to start deploying bear spray, even in gusty conditions. A typical canister of bear spray will have less than 10 seconds of effective spraying, so it's important not to start spraying too early. Wait until the bear is about seven meters away from you, and then give a one to two second spray aiming just below its head. This will create a cloud of bear spray surrounding the animal, which it will have to walk through to get towards you. If the bear keeps traveling towards you, keep spraying in one to two second intervals, remembering to aim a little bit below its head to make sure it walks through the spray. Once the spray takes effect, leave the area, backing away slowly, not taking your eyes off the bear. In all likelihood, it'll probably start running away from you. Okay, lastly, time to clear up a few misconceptions people have about bear spray.
Can I bring bear spray in my luggage when flying? In Canada, bear spray is classified as a class 2 dangerous good, and as such is not legally allowed to be carried on the aircraft or in checked luggage. Though some small fixed wing planes, or bush planes, may be able to transport it externally to the aircraft. For helicopter travel, which is quite common for being dropped off on remote hiking trips, bear spray can only be carried outside of the cabin, usually in a ski basket. Whenever you are transporting bear spray, it's best to store it with the safety on and in a sealed container. Is it legal to carry around bear spray in public? In Canada, pepper spray, mace, and other similar compounds are classified as prohibited weapons. The exception that allows the public to use bear spray is quite specific that is only authorized for defense against bears and other large wildlife. There could also be a legal argument that carrying bear spray in an urban setting or someplace where you're not going to come across bears could be classified as carrying a prohibited weapon. So generally, keep your bear spray handy when you're in the mountains hiking, but keep it at home when you're in the city. Does bear spray still work at cold temperatures? Does it freeze? Bear spray will likely not be affected at temperatures you're likely to encounter while summer hiking. Evidence from both academic and commercial sources found that even in temperatures as low as minus 20 Celsius, bear spray will still continue to function. That being said, its range is limited at those temperatures, down to an effective distance of about 4 meters. And additionally, the results saw that the bear spray would not disperse as well. So it would kind of stay more as a fixed stream rather than spreading out into a cloud. So aiming is much more important. One academic study found that bear spray would continue to function until temperatures right around minus 50 Celsius. Which, at that point, if you're hiking around in minus 50 temperatures, you probably have more problems to deal with than bears. That being said, if you are in temperatures below freezing, it's good practice to keep your bear spray inside at least one layer of clothing to keep it warm while traveling and keep it in a sleeping bag at night just to make sure it stays effective when you need it. If bear spray deters bears, should I spray it on my clothing and equipment? Absolutely not. The deterrent properties of bear spray are only effective when they directly encounter the eyes, nose, or throat of the animals. And if they come across them on a surface, such as a tent or piece of clothing, it will not be effective. Additionally, there is anecdotal evidence that bears are actually attracted to the smell of bear spray on items after it's been deployed. What should I do with expired cans of bear spray? Kind of like any other piece of safety gear with a best before date, if your bear spray is expired, you should no longer carry it with you in the field. The best option is to keep the spray for training purposes, kind of getting used to how to deploy it and getting a feel for the effective range. Some outdoor stores will allow you to return expired cans of bear spray, which they will dispose of, and most municipalities also allow you to dispose of bear spray as a hazardous good. Is bear spray more effective than firearms at deterring bears? There has actually been academic research into both the technical and the human factors surrounding usage of bear spray. You can see links below to a 2012 paper that found that bear spray was more effective at reducing injuries during bear encounters, and that during the documented encounters, the spray deterred 92% of brown bears and 90% of black bears. Especially in Canada, where firearms are prohibited in most protected areas, like national and provincial parks, bear spray seems to be a more effective choice. I accidentally discharged my bear spray. Just a little bit. Should I get a new one? Long story short, yes. The amount of mass transferred by the spray decreases as a function of pressure within the can, and even a short discharge can reduce the range and effectiveness of future sprays. I accidentally sprayed my friend with bear spray. What do I do? Especially when training with bear spray, accidents can happen. If someone does come into contact with the spray, the first thing to do is to help them out of the area and into clean, fresh air. Once settled, flushing the expected area with clean, cool water can provide some temporary relief, though the chemicals in the bear spray are hydrophobic, so they won't be fully removed by the water. Usually, the effects of the spray should dissipate on their own over 30 to 40 minutes, Removing clothing from the affected areas and removing contact lenses should be a priority. Vegetable-based oils can also be effective at drawing bear spray off of skin, but they should not be used in the eyes or internally. The excess oil can then be cleaned off with an alcohol swab. Don't apply any lotions or creams, as these can actually trap the bear spray on the skin rather than removing it and might further aggravate the injury. Lastly, if your patient shows any signs of shortness of breath or other worsening conditions, seek advanced medical care immediately. It may be a bit morbid to say, but if you are spending a lot of time in the backcountry, you will eventually have an encounter with a bear. 
However, a bit of knowledge, proper equipment, and training go a long way to improve that encounter.